Well, this is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius 137 across North America and internationally at cbc.ca. Well, my next guest first came to public attention in the 1990s as the lead singer and songwriter behind the Canadian punk band The Headstones. But Hugh Dillon has since taken his edgy intensity into another realm. As a dramatic actor, he played the drug-addicted lead in Bruce McDonald's mythic punk rock movie Hardcore Logo, a role that earned Hugh Dillon widespread critical acclaim in 1996. And lately, Hugh Dillon has emerged as one of Canada's most respected TV actors. Two years ago, he hit the small screen as Mike Sweeney, a brooding Toronto homicide detective in the Canadian-made crime series Durham County. And since 2008, he's been playing Ed Lane in the drama Flashpoint about a team of elite cops. He's up for a 2009 Gemini Award nomination for his role in the CBS CTV co-production, which airs on both sides of the border, in addition to a nomination for his supporting role in the CTV movie of murder and memory. Hugh Dillon is also about to return to a role he's familiar with himself, Hugh Dillon, the musician. His solo major label debut, aptly titled Works Well With Others, comes out in two weeks on October 13th. And right now, Hugh Dillon joins us live in Studio Q. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. You look great, man. Thank you. Very, very, you know, I guess that's what actors look like. Healthy, strong... Yeah, I love your show. I just wanted to tell you that, oh, and I don't want to talk about my acting or my music. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> my painting or my think, puppet show. I was or wondering, I, you know, I, I did, th- <laughs> I did think about that. Right, I was going. So now he's an actor who is a. How do you know? What if he's an actor? If he wanted to take a fit, yeah. Don't mention my music, but you're you have a new record out. So let me get this straight, Hugh. You, you've got at least three projects, two to, two big TV shows, which right. you star in. You're not, you don't play an incidental role. Right. Um, your musical uh, work, and now you're just putting out this solo record, on a practical level, how are you making all of this work? You know, honestly, I think it's my, my wife, you know, because she helps me keep my, my, my I wanted to use profanity, but I won't, but she <laughs> helps me keep my, my stuff in check, right. you know. And uh, Midori's just been, she's, we've been together for years, 21 years, and we've been married for the last seven. And she's just supportive, you know. When I moved to L.A., she thought it was a, it was a very scary move and very risky, but she was behind it. And then when I was fortunate enough to get these, these shows, she, um, she supports me. So I think really that's where it starts and, uh, and, and ends. It's got to be interesting time management, though. I mean, it's, even, cr- it's incredible. I don't. I don't even know if I can think of someone currently in the landscape who's starring in two television series at yeah. the same time, uh, which in your head must spin into you know, you don't, you don't turn up to Durham County and in in, in <laughs> dressed as Ed Lane every once in a while. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> which whoops, it. wrong show. Yeah. You know, it's so, incredible. It, but it feels like a real moment for you, like uh, uh, if you will, if you don't mind me saying that, uh, you know. A lot of what you've worked towards seem to seems to be suddenly coming to fruition in a big way. Yeah, you're right. It is, and, and it is. And, um, but just with the time management, it is something that uh, how I've learned to cope is I really do leave it to the managers and the agents and the, and the productions because if I don't look at the work ahead of me, at, you know, a day at a time, it's it, your mind will spin. Is it all? It is too much. Is it all of one piece to you in terms of creative expression, acting, and and, and music? I think so. I mean, I think so. I could, I could, we, you know, we could break up into discussion groups and <laughs> and discuss, you know. Well, it wasn't always because, uh, and you've probably heard this quoted back to you at this point. Uh, in the nineties, you said that you never really liked actors or acting. Yeah. Uh, what was it about the profession that made you so dubious? I that? think then, I think, I, I remember what it was. It was the same thing in high school. I was afraid because there's a fear that whenever I say things like that, I don't like them. There's usually something about that that I'm fearful of. And I remember I had an, a dramatic art teacher in, in high school who encouraged me to, to get into acting. And I just didn't like the kids in the acting class. I felt you know less than or whatever it was at the time. And I felt I had more to say in rock and roll. And, and you could be more aggressive and control it. And you didn't have to deal with other people's opinions of your performance at that stage. So I think my mind has changed considerably, you know, because I've gotten to work with Callum Rennie, who really got me into the business in terms of being a generous actor who taught me to um, dispel some of that fear. And then, you know, of course, moving on and now uh, working with Enrico Colantoni, yeah. who I've just never worked with, with uh, 
you know, actors of this quality that, that just bring so much, and they're so uh, understanding and serious, but they've got a killer sense of humor. So you just forget about all the BS, and you're and you're and you're you're happy to be but there. But sticking with the '90s, when you when you turned up in in Hardcore Logo and 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 Bruce McDonald's film, and I'm going to use the word iconic, which we don't like to throw around, but it, but in this case, in terms of uh, music films and rock and roll in this country that is an iconic film mm -hmm. and many of us saw that and said hey that's Hugh from the Headstones man he's doing a good job that this is this is really working he's really believable we like this was that a moment for you where you thought hey uh, this is something I could actually do or were you yes. still self-identifying as a musician who just happens to be a movie no uh, by that time I had shot Dance Me Outside and I'd done a couple of little things and that um that film, I remember it like it was yesterday. I had to prepare for and cal and I had to sign a deal with Bruce, uh, you know, to be clean and sober. That was the very first thing I'd ever done artistically that that didn't bring along, you know, uh, beer and cigarettes. <laughs> you know, it, it was other things. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and so I was very proud of that because I, did, I was afraid to begin with. It was terrifying because I turned Hardcore Logo down five or six times. I didn't want to do it for a number of reasons. And you're a musician, so you know there aren't really, any, at that time, there were very few good rock and roll movies. Yeah. And I was afraid. I was in a successful band that had integrity and, and street credibility, and I was afraid to be in a, in, a, in, a, in a rock and roll movie that didn't have those things. And I was lucky that Bruce was an exceptional guy, and there were great people in it and, and we f and the script got hammered out but it was all done so um professionally that it really taught me i i, I knew nothing about the business professionally or the language of of um acting the yeah. intensity that you had and you i mean you still see it in your acting but 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 certainly as a musician and in the headstones were you worried about about being and then in hardcore logo were you worried about being typecast no as th this is the guy i'm always going to have to play <laughs> never i mean I, I just never ever think about that i i think about you know it's like singing a song I, if you sing a country song does that mean you're a country artist you know what i mean i just never and quite honestly i didn't think about the future i didn't think about i mean I, 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 at that point in time i was still um you know kind of out there doing my own thing and uh so the future wasn't a big uh, part of the equation. Uh, Mike Sweeney, who you play in, in Durham County, Ed Lane in, in Flashpoint, they're complex characters, uh, and they are quite different from each other, but they're both police officers. What's it like to be playing law enforcers as the former <laughs> punk rebel? <laughs> you know, at first it was, I, you know, it was, uh, you know, again, but that's the, the part of, you know, it's all about education. For me, personally, it was about education because I would have my, you know, I played in a rock and roll band and I was into, you know, the whole drug aspect of it. And so police were like, when you saw the cops, it was like seeing a shark in the water. You know, you freeze and, yeah. and then, but, but for me, really, it was an education when I got older and got into acting and got to meet these guys, you know, um, and meet their families, and you see the work they do and the commitment they have. Uh, it was just a, an eye opener, and how uh, you know compassionate these people are. There's one cop that I bring up a lot. His name's Jimmy Bremner. I've just, uh, you know, you're just in awe when you see these guys, and you're humbled, and you, you suddenly your personality can be put in check because you see how humble this guy is, and and he works so hard, and he dedicated so much of his life to law enforcement. And, you know, uh, and it just changed my vocabulary and how I uh, talk about police officers. And then, you know, and, and the other side of that, I always kind of like cops. I like cops and I like criminals, you know, because I knew who they were and what they wanted. When a <laughs> cop stopped me, all they want to know is who you are and what you're doing. If you tell them that, they'll give you a break. Hugh, when you talk about that time uh, and, and the drugs and, and uh, living that romance of self-abuse, if you yes, will, in the, yes, in, the, yeah. in, the, in the 90s. That's a great way to put it. Um, you know, you, had, you went through some tough times. Yeah. Were there? I would imagine there were moments when you couldn't imagine that this that you would end up uh, a successful, sober, uh, balanced guy that you you are now. It was a dream, you know. It was a dream, and again, that that was education. It took me a long time to understand what uh, I was doing to myself and my family, and 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 all all of those things, and that required, you know, I had to go and get help, and it was really as simple as that, and that required my wife Midori to put up with my denial and you know and she just continually you know s suggested 
that uh, you know there's a better life and i and i i uh, you know as i got a little older and and the uh, it's funny what you just said about the romance once the romance kind of ended and it, and there was a- actually really uh, you know a lot of hardship and real issues it it uh, you know you got to kind of hit this place where you can look at it and see what it is and then change your life if you can hmm. these shows that you're working on i mean uh Critics comment on how both Durham County and Flashpoint are redefining the identity of Canadian TV. Uh, do you think that's true? Yeah, I do. I mean, look at, and I mean, I- even on a larger scale, look at what we are doing now. I mean, uh, for example, your show, George Strombolopoulos, those shows. I mean, I'm proud of the, um, you know, the, the the Canadian landscape. Or you know what I mean in terms of uh, what we're doing in entertainment. It just has changed so drastically because, quite honestly, really, weren't we all a little kind of? It was hard to take. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to find a nice way to say this. You know, help me out. Well, nobody was super uh, proud of it. You know, uh, it was yeah, and we know that we have it. Uh, look at our musicians, the Neil Youngs, the Leonard Cohens. We know we have it, right. and there was just never any. I don't know what it is that changed, but something changed. But it's also generational. I feel I feel it less in music. I don't think we've because we've had such a strong music. Fair you know, enough. so when you use examples like that, I feel like it's all, we've always we've always known we're world class. But but, but, but television's I, been a tough but one. But but I but I I, I I beg to differ. Do you? I think that we get these little uh, superstars, so we get a glimpse of it with those guys, right. and then we have a whole. Uh, uh, we have another class of musician and people who are hard workers who go out in this country and play the bars and play the, yeah, you're the totally clubs, right. yeah. you know? Yeah. Wait, let me hear that again. Uh, you're totally right. <laughs> <laughs> although, no, but, although, but, no, although okay. I think that's changing too. I mean, I think, it is, I think from, from yeah. our era, from the 90s yeah. to now, that's changed as a lot. Yeah. I think that there's, there's you know, an, uh, yeah. if you want to call it an underclass of Canadian musicians who are getting recognized, yeah. and, and the internet is helping that, and, and it's yes. easier to get that access. And, and you know what? You, you, it's, you, you're in London in the UK, and, and people are like, what's happening in Canada? They just know that there's exciting stuff coming out of here. That, that hopefully is changing in, t- in television and film, too. You know what's funny to you is I, I actually thought to myself uh, going into this, there's so much I want to talk to you about, and I know there's flashbacks point fans listening and but I, I really wanted to focus on your record and now we have like three minutes to talk about your record if we have <laughs> enough time okay. for you to play so let me ask you this you uh first of all um a solo record that uh and, and a very fine solo record I'm, I'm really enjoying this it comes out in a couple of weeks it does sound different a uh-huh. little different from uh it, it's um i would say um uh it's still got a darkness to it, but it, it, it's uh, um, there's moments that are certainly less angry, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and and um, uh, maybe even a little uh, sentimental or romantic mm-hmm. in, in places. Um, tell me about the decision to make a solo record now. Well, I never uh, I never stopped writing songs. I mean, I wrote songs before I was in bands before the Headstones, and when it ended, I I mean, music's always saved my life uh, on every level. Uh, it's the one thing I always had. And um, and I continued to write songs, and and Chris Oste, uh and myself just put together songs. And Paul Langlois from the Hip heard them. I'll give you the, the Coles Notes version. And he just thought they were great songs. And he he th- said I shouldn't turn my back on on recording these and come to the bathhouse. And and Rob Baker from the tra- bathhouse is the, the Tragical Hip Studio yeah. in Kingston. Yeah. Yeah. Kingston boy, you're a Kingston <laughs> boy yes. too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I grew up with these guys. You right. know, I played hockey with Paul when I was eight, and they helped me get a record deal when, when I, with the headstones. And so, you know, here I am. It's gone full circle, and Rob Baker plays a, a, a wicked uh, steel guitar on a song called Lucky. It was just, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of this record. It's, um, it's fun to play, and it's, uh, you know, and then Flashpoint, I mean, the, the, the Flashpoint um, helped me out because Anne-Marie Le Traverse, yep. who's, who's saved my, my bacon on a number of low, uh, um a number of times has uh, you know her and Bill Mustos who produced Flashpoint asked me about music and then all of a sudden there's a song in Flashpoint and then you know we talked about another song this year and they're just very encouraging I'm, you know what it is too with with the, the folks at Flashpoint and Durham they're just very creative people who are encouraging and 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 really decent folks so it makes you want to be a better person and work D- harder did you used to equate on some level um presenting music uh in an honest way with being angry that you need yeah. to somehow yeah well at first i mean not 
Well, I mean, you know, I started when I was young, and so, you know, you have that, that, for me, it was just such an explosion of emotions, and, and, and life was going so fast that, you know, that, you know, you know, the funny thing is you have that anger, and it's justified in your 20s and maybe getting into your 30s, but eventually it turns on you and turns inward, and that's where it becomes a real struggle. Although you must be aware of the cliche of the guy who gets a little bit older and starts writing introspective, um, uh, mellower songs. Yeah. You're going to have to come out with an album 10 years from now that's just you screaming <laughs> <laughs> and I just think. pounding things into your head, you know. Hugh Dillon in Studio Q, the star of Flashpoint in Durham County, and also, uh, well, a musician, well-known musician for many years here in Canada, with a new solo record called Works Well With Others. Yeah. 